All right. Well, I think we probably should um, make a start. That's um, a couple of minutes after 7.30. So um, let's let's get into it. Had a couple more join. Uh, so uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Jeremy Butler. I'm the uh, team leader of the Urban and Rural Development Team at Tasman District Council. Uh, and I'd like to start tonight just with a quick karakia. So, uh, kia, kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa punamu te moana, he hurahi ma tato i te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tato i a tato katoa, huie tai kie. And that just means uh, may peace be widespread, may the sea be like greenstone, a pathway for us all this day, let us show respect for each other and for one another and to bind us all together. So that seems, seems appropriate to start off this evening. Uh, so as I say, uh, welcome uh, to the this, this second webinar for our, our Reimagining Richmond South project. Uh, as I say, my name is Jeremy Butler and I'm leading this project from a Tasman District Council point of view. Uh, also on the call, who you can see, we have uh, uh, Joe Mercado, and, uh, and uh, who's um, with WSP and he's uh, the lead designer for this project. And uh, Nicole White, who's also, also with WSP and our local Nelson office. Uh, and Nicole is, um, is project managing and assisting with the project uh, as well. Uh, I'll just jump on to the next slide. I forget, uh, we'll just jump to the next slide. So um, we're gonna run through the, the purpose of this presentation. Um, so really, uh, uh, just to recap slightly, in October last year, we launched uh, the Reimagining Richmond South project. Uh, and the purpose is to create a structure plan for the area south of Richmond and uh, towards Hope, uh, the area around Hope. Uh, the structure plan will be a guide for how Richmond South could develop. Um, it looks at things such as housing type and density, it looks at areas for business and how people will get around. And it also looks at where's best for community spaces and also for the natural environment. So there's a, a big range of factors that we're taking into account as we work through this structure planning exercise. Um, we had a series of drop-in sessions in the Hope Hall last uh, November and December, and we had a series of online engagement also. Uh, today we'll uh, be doing a recap of the project. I'll introduce to our in a second. Uh, he'll take you through the engagement that we've done and introduce um, some of the ideas and the concepts that have come out of that first round of engagement. Uh, so the agenda for this evening, uh, as I've just mentioned, first off is a, is a recap of the, the project, the purpose and the pro program, which I've just uh, gone into. Uh, a recap of the uh, round one engagement that I mentioned. Uh, and Joel mentioned the emerging themes, what are the themes that really came out of that first round of engagement. Uh, and following that, uh, Joel will introduce um, some of the concepts and some of the ideas that, have, uh, that the team has been working on since that time. Uh, and also introduce the round two engagement that we're uh, just heading into. The, the, these webinars are the first uh, of, of those sessions for that round two engagement. And following that off, we'll have a, uh, an opportunity for some Q&A, uh, some questions and answers. Uh, now, just on that, I'll, you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, we've got a there's a question and answer facility and there's also a chat facility. Now I encourage you to use the Q&A function. Uh, we won't be able to uh, use the chat for questions, uh, just doesn't work well and, and the question uh, function is really well set up for us to be able to answer questions. So if you do have questions at any time during the presentation, please go in and just pop them in that Q&A uh, function and we'll be monitoring those questions and we'll um, come back to those and it'll give us a few to go through when we get to the end. If there is any sort of genuine chat, anyone got technical problems or anything like that, please put it into the chat, uh, um, the chat boxes that's that's available. Uh, other things, uh, we are recording the session, so just be aware of that. Uh, we, we may uh, put it up unless there's any technical disasters or anything. We'll uh, put it up on our website for other people to view uh, later on um, for people that weren't able to make it tonight. So um, I think I will hand over to Joel now, who will uh, take us through um, the rest of the agenda for this evening. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, kia ora, everyone. Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you for making time for us on a on a Wednesday evening to um, to recap on on where we what we what we've done so far, why why we're here for for reimagining Richmond South project. Um, they just just remind ourselves as well in terms of what's the what's the problem we're trying to fix, what's the purpose or the reason why, um, and the, the pressure in terms of the growing population that Tasman District is under pressure. Uh, it is fast becoming one of the the country's the most unaffordable regions, and and with that comes that that the, the requirement for the council to provide for additional housing opportunities, as well as employment um, and in business land that's available for for communities to grow into. 
And that's, that's part of the balancing act that we need to work through in terms of balancing the urban growth requirements with, with, um, with the rural economy that's um, so, so well established in a big part of what, what it means to be in the Tasman district. The, um, the growth projections for, for Tasman show that there's, there's a substantial increase in the population for, for a place the size of Richmond, in particular where that needs to be accommodated as the main urban center. Uh, there's an additional 4,300 new houses that will be required by 2031. So in this, these figures supposedly are, are becoming out of date or being taken out pretty quick as well. The, in terms of the initial growth, also just, just touching on, on growth, we had a couple of questions last time around around the growth. Um, it is often assessed as a sort of a linear kind of path in terms of linear growth, but we do know that growth happens in, in sort of spurts. You have, a, you have a peak and then it flattens out a bit and then it peaks again and, and so on as, as things happen, as communities grow and more facilities are made available as well. But the growth is go, is coming. It's it's something that is 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 been identified and anticipated through the future development strategy 2019, which is being replaced by the future development strategy 2022. So that's currently underway. So there's these other projects that the Tasman District Council is working through. Uh, we're also involved in the growth plan changes, the growth area plan changes as well through from WSP. We were supporting the Tasman District Council with rezoning of land in other places. So this isn't the only place in Tasman District that is being looked at for growth. Uh, there is additional uh, plan enabled capacity coming on stream in places like Brightwater, Mapua, Motueka, and so on in terms of the satellite settlements and villages, um, towns of Tasman. The Future Development Strategy 2019 identified the um, the additional land in terms of uh, along the main road hope as, as potentially business land uh, or looking more at this, this sort of purpose in terms of employment and expanding the, the residential, potential residential growth area into the what's what's shown there as T38 hope and T40. So the areas in terms of the, how they've been tag, tagged back in the, in the future development strategies as the areas for growth. That includes the Hill Street South Foothills as well, which is, is expanding that, that existing area of countryside living, rural countryside living space. In order to address the change anticipated in, in the Future Development Strategy 2019 and to be able to better understand the place and develop a vision together with the community about the future of, of Richmond South um, Hope area, we, uh, the Tasman District Council, uh, identified the key focus here in terms of study area, which reflects more so the era from the Future Development Strategy 2019, and that's been revalidated through the Future Development Strategy 2002 in that, that current process, as well as a wider uh, for, uh, indicative study area. So it's casting the net a bit more wider so we understand the place and look at it in context. So we can't be looking at things in isolation. Uh, this isn't a, a, a fast moving train in a particular direction. It can't, it can't be. Um, um, consider or navigate is about the navigation where where things go to so the, the the project itself aims to create a joint community vision and this is down through a participatory approach in terms of the engagement sessions that we've been having and we may remember the round one engagement in in the next phases of the project that's coming through uh, in order to 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 get us to a a an agreed common ground sort of decision at the end of this journey uh, we've designed a seven stage process that is has in itself you know quite a few phases and, and deliverables within that um, you, you may recall uh, in the stage one in terms of the early engagement the first round of engagement in terms of come we came out to to the community and tried to understand or asked questions had conversations with various people landowners as well as uh, interest groups and in water community through the drop-in sessions as well so that was the first touch point at the stage one uh, we then gone away and, and tried to understand all the messaging that have been coming through, some of the emerging themes and um, making sense of, of, of all the, the knowledge that we've been gathering, as well as understanding from project partners, such as Waka uh, as well as the, within the council itself, the infrastructure providers in terms of what, what can be done or what should be done and how that, that growth is planned for. We're now in the stage three engagement, so the round two engagement, where we want to be working through uh, the visioning and understand what what the concept of what their options could be for looking at what change could look like. Um, following that, we'll, we'll, we'll 
go away, um, gather again more information that we get that we, that we, we're harnessing through this process, and we'll analyze that uh, and uh, report back or come back for another round of engagement at, at a stage five, uh, which will be looking towards a pre the preparation of a structure plan uh, or the actual plan to moving towards a plan change process that would enable some additional growth in some parts. I guess the key thing is where that growth should go and, and how it goes. There's definitely a need for providing for more business land. Uh, and there's definitely a need for identifying the, the land that is currently actually urban in terms of use as well, particularly around the main road Hope and within the Hope rounds out road uh, crossing. That would then go to just, just making a point as well that this isn't the, the this round and the next round of engagement aren't the last time that you'd be able to have a say or express your opinion about things. Um, once the council uh, or when the council, uh, if the council goes ahead with a notification of a plan change, that is a statutory process under the Resource Management Act, which itself is open to public submissions. And so people can um, submit on the plan change um, or it goes through it, it gets developed and pushed out to the district plan review. So that, that process is yet to come in terms of exactly how that's gonna progress. So just recapping on the round one engagement. So you may remember that in November, we we had uh, drop-in sessions in the whole poll. Uh, they were very well attended. We had quite a, quite a few people come through the door. Uh, there were some really good conversations and we did that interaction in terms of interactive map posters and, and maps where people were able to uh, tell us a bit more about the place or their views about the place and, and, and what to protect, what's important to them. Uh, there was information on the council's website. Uh, there were in newsletters and other articles. They were meeting with landowners and infrastructure providers. Uh, we had um, Hui with Mana Fenua as well, and there'll be some more engagement with Mana Fenua going forward in this, this next round of, of, of engagement. And the four community drop-in sessions um, where the, we did a sticky dot democracy type approach uh, where people told us a lot about the sort of emerging themes that uh, in terms of what's, what's important to, to the place. Through that, we started developing these emerging themes. Um, one of the one of the questions or one of the the, the the ideas is thrown up in terms of what's what's the what's the name for Richmond South, um, or is it actually Hope, uh, or is there something else? So I guess it's part of as as we develop in this this um, framework for 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 growth uh, in whichever way it takes place, that there's there's a, a naming of the place that comes with it. Protecting productive land um, and the ability to have access to fresh produce that's affordable, uh, good quality, and and grown locally. There's a there's a strong uh, a strong emphasis around being able to grow local, feed feed yourself, feed feed your friends. Um, that there's this all the elements of it. We want to be able to dig down a little bit deeper through this next round of engagement as well to be able to unpack that a little bit more, perhaps and understand a bit more what, what elements of those are the ones that we really, that we do want to protect and put put forward, understand the, the, the extent of that. Variety of housing. Uh, we heard um, uh, good good things and bad things about Barry Fields. We heard um, good things and bad things about housing in terms of what, what sort of housing people want. Um, but there was also discussion around considering some density, density options, higher density options, whereby if you're gonna be giving up some, some of the rural land adjacent to, to Richmond, that you don't end up in a situation where you got another generation of creep in another 20 years or 30 years time. That this is a long-term vision about the growth provides a really robust framework in that way providing greater certainty around where growth can happen, how it can happen, um, and the infrastructure that's required to support that and while protecting uh, rural land as well. Local projects, shops, services, schools, uh, those are important things for, for people being able to have, you know, just walk down to the shop, for example, um, or have, have those services locally. You, you do have uh, a very uh, well-serviced uh, center just down the road in Richmond and further along, you've got Nelson as well. So there's, there's quite a complete community that, that could be shaping up around this. Transport and transport is always a big topic in this, this sorts of journeys. Um, the, 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 the road, the, the transport network itself, uh, those are the strong emphasis on walkways and cycleways as well in terms of walking and cycling as multimodal uh, ways of transport, but from a recreational point of view as well and, and commuting. So a good range of, of feedback that we received on that. 
uh, concurrently with that in terms of the greenways, but having that emphasis around parks and open space, um, a lot of green space was was quite an important theme as well. And that semi-rural amenity, the fact that you know you you, you chose to live in, in Tasman or you're born and grown up in Tasman and you've, you're drawn to the place for what it is. And so how do you protect that? How do you retain the the natural uh, the Wintham's wayfinding and relationship that people have to the Fenwa itself. So this next part of the, this presentation, we want to talk about uh, these early insights uh, concepts. And I do want to emphasize the, the point that these are um, an illustration of what change could look like. And this is to help some people who would like to understand or talk to something to a map. So we did hear from quite a few people to say, oh, like if you want to talk about change, I need to, to sort of understand what it could look like. What, what, what is it that we're talking about? Where, where is the urban growth going? Where is the, where's the rural land remaining? Uh, what's happening to the school and those sorts of things. And so we try to capture some of the ideas that are coming through from, from, from a lot of the conversations we had with both um, groups uh, in terms of the, the targeted engagement as well as with uh, other drop-in sessions in the, in the whole poll. This initial concept is reflecting that some, some, of the, some of the views of people that so you, you retain the growth to, to where it's currently zoned. Uh, so that would mean um, just, just sticking with the residential zoning that is currently shown in the district plan primarily, uh, but also as well as recognizing some of the existing urban um, urban land that, uh, you know, you've got a smaller sections that are urban size, they've got a residential dwelling, they're residential use, uh, they're not large rural properties or commercial use, if you like, and they are serviced by reticulated sewers, they have reticulated services. So in that sense, by definition, in, in the legislation, they are effectively urban. And I guess this will be a, a, a way of acknowledging that and moving, moving down that path as the district plan is produced and promulgated, recognizing that those elements. They, and remember again, just that, that when we say residential, it's just as a, as a general residential, it's not a medium high or, or low density or, or mixed use or anything else like that. It's just showing this could be a residential extent, this could be a, a business extent, and this could be a rural, and the rural could be itself rural productive, conservation, etc. Uh, just note as well that we, we've, um, we've identified the waterways and the ridges. So those are fairly, um, um, we went back to first principles, those are, those are the primary factors or, or characteristics of the air that we, we take in, into account quite, quite considerably as well. Um, ridges and the hills are good, good points of reference as well that you know whichever way you're going when you can see the hills, you know where you're heading in terms of from a direction point of view. This option does raise the question around having a greater level of, of, of reliance on intensification or growth in existing urban enrichment, uh, as well as other settlements as well. So there's, there will be, you know, there's still people wanting to move to the area and wanting to grow up to, to live in the place. And so that housing will, will be coming through either bio of attrition or in a planned way. Uh, the, the next couple of concepts that are talking about a bit more change and a bit more about what, what the options could be, in particular how you sort of center around a village heart or a center, a new center, if you like. And this concept too is just thinking about a town center building around the existing Hope uh, cluster uh, or at, the, at the intersection, the crossing of, of um, Main Road Hope and Runs Out Road. That includes uh, additional residential land towards um, down at Rounds on White Road that would involve uh, some new forms of public transport supporting that growth as well. Uh, and by retains a, a fair bit more of, of land uh, being rural. So I guess it's understanding from that how the, the town could grow. And again, this, this is an initial think piece. Uh, there'll be through their workshops next week, we wanna be able to dig down a little bit deeper and get some more ideas about what uh, the way the, the, the the new heart of the village could, could develop. Concept three, looking at um, locating a, a new center towards um, towards the hillsides, the in, in somewhat nestled in between the two ridgeline systems that define the extent of, of, of the new residential growth area. The, there is an additional residential uh, neighborhood developing around that center and there's still an emphasis around being able to support the Hope um, intersect, the, the intersection of, of Main Road Hope and Runs Out Road 
to support that as a bit more of a, a, a village as well. So there's just just point out here in terms of traffic calming and safe crossing measures on Main Road Hope, for example, that's come through as a very clear clear desire from the community being able to go walk across or even drive across. It's, a, it's both a vehicle uh, walking and cycling improvement that's been highlighted by people being able to get across the road to go to to the to the Hope Hall or get across the road to go to school. So there's a bit of a severance from Ranzau Road um, School uh, in in the in where people live. And lastly, the, in terms of early insights, a uh, uh, slight variation from concept three in, in pushing that, that center more into, into the, the heart of, of the, the era of change, if you like, um, very much relying on, on capitalizing on that flatter land that's easier to develop as well, and the greenways that could be developed as long the streams. The, what we're showing there as well, sort of showing as a boulevard, uh, is is um, uh, also identifying as uh, as the main uh, bus route uh, in, that's been looked at. Um, I, I understand that Tasman District Council is currently or has been consulting on on transport infrastructure such as a park and ride, and the way in which the the bus route will be coming through this the from from Main Road, Main Road Hope um, down into White Road and then carry on Payton Road into town. So when you're talking about intensif intensification or growth, you're also looking at being able to align growth with transport infrastructure, as well as your three waters infrastructure in terms of stormwater, water supply, and wastewater infrastructure. We'll be able to you know, welcome questions through the Q&A function as well in relation to, to these concepts or ideas or questions that you have at the moment. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to discuss more of your ideas in the, in the visioning sessions and the, in the workshops next week. So just talking about that in terms of round two engagement, what, what can you expect next week in terms of what we're planning to do? Uh, we do want to be accessible. We do want people to be able to, to tell us about their vision for, for Richmond South Hope. Uh, we do want to hear more about what the aspirations are and what do you, you know, people value so that those, those can be protected and, and enabled. So we have um, a couple of sessions on the Monday and another session on the Tuesday as well in terms of visioning workshops where we're going to be um, running through and trying to extract through through online engagement as well um, what uh, people want to see happen in the Richmond South Hope area. We'll then follow on on the Wednesday with um, with the more topic specific sessions that we thought came through quite strongly in the emerging themes and that we wanted to try and we're going to have a go at digging a little bit deeper taking that deeper dive into what that issue is or that, that opportunity is that people would like to, to be discussing. So that's where we want to be able to, you know, look at balancing out the productive land, housing and employment and the provision that there's, there's quite a bit of tension around the way in which you find that balance. And also want to be able to dive a bit more into that creating communities with a heart. How, what, what, what are people's aspirations around the way in which to, to enable that? So that's, um, that's largely where we got in terms of just recapping on, on the process to date. Um, I'll, I'll hand, back to, hand this back to Jeremy and, and Nicole White in terms of um, thinking about any questions or going through the Q&A that we might be getting through. Fantastic. Thanks, uh, Joao. No, I really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, and no, I think we um, will launch into uh, questions now. So uh, as I said before, if you do have any questions, please put them in the, the Q&A function um, uh, at the bottom of the, the Zoom screen. Uh, and I'll ask, uh, and Nicole is monitoring those. So I'll ask Nicole if, um, if we've got any, and if she could please take us through them. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, only one question at the moment. So yeah, definitely, if anyone else has anything to add to that, um, jump in there and put your questions in. Um, so the question that we have is, what does mixed business mean? Uh, is that a mixture of shops or is it more industrial business? Um, I, would, would, uh, I'll make a quick start on that, if that's okay, and then Joelle, maybe from a, um, where we're going with this. So. Uh, Currently, uh, we have a mixed business zone in Tasman, uh, so I guess some people will be familiar with um, the area that's developing down uh, Lower Queen Street on the Seaward side, uh, that, where there's, um, there's a new road going on there, I can't remember the name of it, um, 
and it's got those sort of large format commercial uh, activities there. There's things like Elsco, there's um, and, and various other businesses operating out of there. Uh, that that's our current mixed business zone, and it's a it's a zone which is um, it, it's it's sort of a cleaner, if you like, than an industrial zone. It's lower impact than an industrial zone. So that's that's what our, our, our mixed business zone means at the moment. Um, but uh, I'll just ask Joao to give us a bit more detail on on uh, where we might be going for this site, uh, for this area. Uh, sure, and 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 hi back. Uh, thank you for for your for your question. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 intention is that we identify the area that you could grow for. It's, it's, it, we purposely called it all mixed business because there is no perceived or anticipated. Um, particular use in terms of light industrial to, to mixed business. The mixed business, as, as Jeremy was saying, the mixed business zone on the Tasman Resource Management Plan is, is a, takes more cognizance of sensitive users next door to that business activity. If you think about some of the mixed use zone, when you're thinking about other district plans or other cities, the mixed, mixed use zone is, is by, in essence, a, a residential zone where business activities, office activities are are allowed or enabled, uh, whereas the mixed business zone might be going more in towards towards your business parks as well as allowing for some light industrial. The other thing to note as well is that with rural production comes the need for providing for some semi uh, light industrial type activities that may have to have they have a functional need to locate in the rural area, but also they could they could be they have a functional need to be located on a main road, easy access, um, easy for easy access for, for the large trucks, the large vehicles that would access them. So there's this is part of the conversation is what is the business zone? What is the mix that should be provided for? What type of controls should there be in relation to, to reverse sensitivity issues is where a business activity has an adverse or negative impact on, on, a, on a sensitive receiver next door residential use, for example, or childcare. Uh, schools, etc. So that's that's part of the conversation going forward. A point out is that Three Brothers Corner has been identified as a mixed business zone in, in this context here. It, it is it is where a, a supermarket has been consented and, and is pretty much um, you know guaranteed to to go ahead in terms of what we're told they're, they're going ahead. Uh, but we're also trying to be respectful of the existing uh, users as well in terms of residential users as well as your smaller shops uh, along the way. Hope to answer the questions and uh, we look forward to discussing that for the next week. Thanks, Joel. Um, we've got two questions here regarding the Pioneer Cemetery on White's Road. Um, so one is, are there any plans to retain the this historical site? Um, and then another is regarding uh, concept three, which shows um, that area to be developed and, and how would we protect it? Actually, um, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I remember people raising that at the, at the drop-in sessions, and I think you and I had a bit of a drive past that very cemetery as well, um, having a look at it. So I think, um, you know, from, from my perspective, the intention would be to protect sites like that. Uh, we are aware of it, so thank you for bringing it up again, but the intention is that those sites will be protected. I don't know if, don't know if you have anything else to add, Jeremy. No, no, look, um, I think a site like that is... Um is important i understand that um that your family has been in touch with the council over time and this kind of um uh, we're not exactly up to speed with with um you know where things are at from an legal sense uh but um we've, we're certainly aware of that now and thank you for bringing it to our attention uh and i think that's you know heritage sites like that are a very important part of um the matters we need to take into account when doing a a structure planning exercise like this so um, yes, certainly I think that's um, that's very useful, and it's it's one of those factors we need to take into account when doing that more detailed design work. Uh, so another question here: Has there been any consideration of extending north towards Stoke, for example, the Rain Farms area? Maybe one for you, Jeremy. Yeah, um, yeah, that certainly is um, part of uh, a wider uh, plan. So you may be aware that. Uh, the Tasman District Council and the Nelson City Council jointly do a future development strategy uh, that is uh, 
in, in the latter stages at the moment. I understand, in fact, it's open for submission at the moment. So uh, that, that may be something you want to get involved in. Um, the rain farm is uh, just, well, for other people that are on the call, it's the area, it's the farm that's in behind Saxon Field, uh, the sports complex, uh, just sort of on, I guess, on the, the inland side of that, if you like, or to the east. Um, there's there's a, a dairy farm um, there. And that uh, farm is definitely identified in the future development strategy uh, as uh, being a, a location of growth for the future. It's actually within uh, Nelson City Council, so it's not something Tasman has control over, um, but we do jointly work on the FDS, Future Development Strategy, and, um, and yes, it is included there. Uh, but I'd add that, um, that, that that Future Development Strategy looks at uh, all of our growth requirements for the next 30 years, what is the rate of growth we're experiencing, and, and there's a legal obligation that we provide enough growth capacity. Uh, the uh, the Rains Farm and indeed this Richmond South area have been included in the, the previous 2019 FDS, uh, as well as intensification options. And we needed all, both those green fields and the intensification options in order to meet our growth requirements. So um, yeah, so the Rain Farm is definitely in the mix uh, for future growth of Nelson and Tasman. Okay, next question here is about the mixed business zone that's shown on all four of the concepts. Uh, so that's between um, Main Road Hope, um, or along Main Road Hope. Um, so is this set in stone or is there a possibility of it becoming residential? I can, I can have a go at that. Um, the, as it said, stone, no, no, nothing on that plan is set in stone. Um, I think that's the starting point. Um, apart from maybe the existing residential, deferred residential, which is the area here, just, just along Beta Road and Hart Road. I mean, those those are in the plan already. So that's set in stone in the sense that that's, that's the residential area that will still be enabled. But in terms of the, the, the key area of that we explore in terms of the, this core part here, I guess being the part of the question is the, again, whether it's light industrial, mixed business or a mixed use type of type of use or residential, I guess that's, you know, that's, that's on, that's on the table. That's part of the discussions I'll be having in, in this, this next round uh, of engagement. So it is up for discussion. It's not set in stone. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I'll just add on that as well is, is that what, what we've been trying to turn our minds to the way in which the main road hope corridor gets treated in terms of the build form that you get on either side of that corridor, such that you do allow for the for some some businesses that want to establish in the area to establish in the area, so provide more employment. And I guess it's also looking at what are the businesses that are going to be the higher gen employment generators. You know, the warehouse, the big warehouse buildings have a, a lesser ratio of em employee to to floor area, if you like, uh, whereas offices and so on have a, a greater ratio of employee to to the to the footprint. Um, whether this is a place we'll be able to have offices, we don't know yet. Those are all things that need to be answered as we go forward as well. So hopefully that answers your question. And um, I would encourage also thinking about the, um, I think is the, correct me if I'm wrong, Nicole, but I think is is looking at the the sessions on the, when we do a deeper dive around the, um, the housing and employment. So either session, topic session one or topic session two, we'll be looking at some of that build form in relation to the centers as well. So we'll probably be touching on that very subject on, on both those sessions. Cool. So another question here is, um, how will this affect the subdivision rules and limits? So for example, some areas of Haycock Road may require minimum subdivision of 10,000 square meters per title. Will this be revised? Uh, yeah, I'll have a go at that one. Um, so yeah, that's quite a Big question. <laughs> in a lot of ways, a lot of facets to that. Uh, specifically in terms of Haycock Road, no, that is outside of the uh, scope of uh, this work. Really, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. I mean, there, there, there is. Um, we are, we are looking, I guess, at the foothills that run along Hill Street South, uh, but where that where we stop there, uh, it probably won't go as far as Haycock Road. Um, but <clears throat> parallel to that, uh, you may be aware we do have a, a, a much bigger, longer term project going on, which is um, called our Tasman Environment Plan. And that is a review of the Tasman Resource Management Plan. That's a, a full plan review where um, essentially everything 
is up for grabs uh, and, and is subject to change and revision. Uh, one of the areas of that plan uh, will be looking at, at the rural residential zones, uh, just um, so other people are aware, the Haycock Road area is a rural residential zone. It's an area where you can subdivide down to, um, I'll take your word for it there, it's a, a one hectare. I haven't, I don't know it off by heart, but I presume you're right there. Uh, that, uh, so we will be looking at all the rural residential zone locations and working out where it may, in some cases, it may be appropriate for the minimum lot size to reduce. Uh, so no, not as part of this work, but it is part of that um, that uh, longer work. Uh, in terms of how it affects subdivision rules and limits generally, uh, we need to work that out. Uh, and the, the, I guess the technical aspects of how we uh, put this Richmond South area into the Tasman Resource Management Plan, um, if and when a plan change is, um, uh, goes through the process, that's something we'll need to look at. But um, we do have a number of tools in the Tasman Resource Management Plan uh, for subdivision, um, and we'll be using a range of those to try to ensure that we get the type of um, <clears throat> development that that the plan calls for, if you know what I mean. So if we're looking at medium density and uh, greater density locations than what we currently provide for in some parts of Tasman, then we'll be needing to potentially craft some new rules uh, to enable that to happen in the right locations for this Richmond South Hope area. So I hope that, hope that covers it, thanks. Next question is about the definition of mixed business. So the Tasman uh, Resource Management Plan definition uh, currently excludes non-residential activity, uh, cafes, or anything less than uh, 500 square meters. Is there any anticipated movement from this definition? Uh, uh, you can have a go, Jeremy, but I think just, just a quick thought is that, um, again, the the idea is, is that this is not a mixed business that you see currently in the district plan. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just talking about a hypothetical, it's a new zone effectively as well. It's, it's just saying this is it's business land, commercial employment yeah. land. Um, let's, it, what I think is useful is that, you know, if there are some, some issues and hangups that you've got uh, from the existing district plan, that you bring this to our attention that informs the way in which the policy framework can be developed around the structure plan as we move forward. So yeah. those are really good points to bring up, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's, it's something to be worked through as we move forward, Jeremy? Yep, no, absolutely, I completely agree. We do have a current mixed business zone, as we mentioned before, uh, but uh, we have to rezone all of Tasman for the Tasman Environment Plan. So again, everything's up for grabs. Uh, we won't actually be having a mixed business zone in the future because um, for technical reasons that we're not able to under the national planning standards, which is getting a bit jargony, but uh, we will be having to move towards different types of zones. So really, just as Joel says, it's a, it's a horses for courses. We just need to look at what's appropriate for that location. Uh, I would also point out that uh, we've had a little bit of confusion in the past. Um, if we nip back to one of those uh, concept maps, uh, uh, Joel, just up a little bit, yeah. So there's two different types of business uh, land shown in those. There's the purple that's running alongside the uh, uh, main road hope. Yep. Uh, that is the mixed business land that we're talking about. And that's sort of, let, let's call it more like light industrial or, you know, as, as Joel says, it's really up for debate as to what that is included, but it's not, we're not talking, um, you know, cafes and, and, and sort of retail shops there. Uh, we've then got the pink, the area where, which on this particular one is shown at White Road there on this concept, and that's much more your village centre uh, with with your cafes and your um, and your fine grain you know retail shops uh, like you might see on Queen Street. So two different types of business land that we're showing in those pictures there. Just in case anyone's confused about that. Yeah, and just just answer that, Jeremy. That I think uh, that you know there's a third one which is the I think is a rural industrial site and the mm, mill. Um, yeah. And so I guess it's at the moment he's identifying those areas that are using that sort of industrial, light industrial type of um, uh, scale as well as mm -hmm. looking at uh, uh, what is the direction for, for that business land to go. And you might, you, might, you might have a situation where you've got light industrial on this side and is a more of a residential friendly um, transitional zone on, on this, on, on the Southern side of main road hope towards the residential area. So it's, it's all part of the discussion that, that hopefully we'll get through the next couple of weeks or next week. Okay, I think we may just have time for one or two more last questions. 
I'm just conscious that we need to start wrapping things up shortly. Uh, so the next one is how many productive hectares will be lost with Richmond South FDS plants? We uh, don't know that yet, but we will be calculating that and taking that into consideration. It's it's a very important question. Um, the but I guess the 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 future development strategy in the Richmond South are two different pro projects as well. Just just to make that point, but how we how we going to understand that there's this we don't we don't have that that um, in front of us but we, we can once we generate maps and we'll look at the areas we'll be able to calculate and get get come to grips a bit more mm. about how much land will be going from rural to urban through this process so we'll bear that in mind for the as we progress through the project if that's okay mm. yep. anything to add there jeremy uh no no just just to point out that um we've certainly identified that uh yeah some areas of the the site are productive uh, and some areas are less productive along the, the ridge tops. We've uh, had advice from our productive land, uh, well, our, our land scientists within Tasman District Council to that effect. And we have very recent modelling, which uh, we are, um, so which is actually still in development, so it's still being refined. Uh, but uh, it confirms that as well that essentially, yes, there is high productive land, uh, sort of down mainly along White Road, uh, but less so up on those ridge lines. But just as Joel says, uh, until we know what the future shape. Of this area might look like and that's everything is up for um up for debate there uh we can't really give an answer in terms of the number of hectares okay and one last question i think um if you do have further questions feel free to still add them to the q a and we will take a look at those and try to answer those um either on our website or by emailing you if we have your contact details um so last question here is, has there been any consideration of intensifying the centre of Richmond uh, with infill mixed use slash high density housing? Uh, well, maybe I'll start off, Joe, and you might want to uh, add. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, so the future development strategy uh, absolutely contemplates uh, intensification of Richmond. It, uh, the is uh, the future development strategy is looking at potentially up to six stories being enabled around the center of Richmond uh, with medium density uh, growth in a number of other areas around Richmond. Uh, we've got what's called our, um, our Richmond intensive development area, which is quite a large area of Richmond where intensive development is enabled. Uh, and we uh, have a work program um, aside from this Richmond South work, we have a work program uh, to look at additional ways that we can incentivize intensification in Richmond. Uh, and I should also add in other settlements uh, such as uh, uh, Brightwater and Wakefield and Motueka uh, are also got areas that are identified for intensification. So we're really working on that. It is, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll give Joao an opportunity to, um, to give more detail on that as well in terms of <laughs> how it can be achieved. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, Jeremy. Um, just just you know, reiterate the point that there, there is an existing intensification strategy for Richmond. Um, and that that strategy may is likely going to be revised as part of the future development as, as, as one of the key moves or actions from the future development strategy. And we're definitely not looking at Richmond South in isolation of that. I think that's a key point to, to for what people take away today. And it's something that, you know, has uh, has come through that maybe there's, there's no intention here of turning a blind eye to the opportunities that there may be in relation to, to, to further intensification in Richmond. Um, but the studies and the evidence that has, has have, have come through to date uh, telling us that it's it's a combination of both greenfield as well as the brownfield or the intensification of existing urban areas. Um, um, Nicole, if, if that's okay, we've got we got three questions there. We can probably squeeze a couple of answers to them because I, I do think that they're sort of um, important questions too, but we, we probably need to ask people to um, to um, forgive us in terms of the timing. We need to call, call it a call it a night at some point, um, so we can achieve those. Um, yep, if that's okay. okay. Yep. Uh, so the next question then, uh, an issue in many uh, centres in New Zealand is ribbon that ribbon development has been allowed. Um, Hope being an ideal example of this. Uh, well, Will any new plan stop this to reduce costs of infrastructure development? 
I'll have a go at that, Jeremy, if that's okay. I think yeah. that this is one of the reasons why we're doing this work. Um, it's one of the, you know, the main reasons for, for why you do, we do want to establish a, a structure plan or a framework, a development framework to, to guide the future development for, for this area. Um, just also, if, if, if we, you know, when you get to a point where there's a structure plan that shows how growth could, how, how growth will be managed going forward, that growth is not going to happen in one overnight is going to take, you know, 15, 20, 30 years. Uh, although some people are telling us otherwise everything will be taken up in five years, but um, it is it is a, a gradual release of land. It is a gradual um, sort of managed uh, approach to, to develop in that. So the intention is that the structure plan will be providing a stronger framework for um, uh, uh, managing the, the infrastructure and land use or infrastructure and growth alignment in that sense in terms of integration so that you, you, you do have a, a managed um, way of providing for that and, and, and not just keep extending on in that ribbon development down Main Road Hope all the way to Brightwater. There's a separation between Hope and, and Brightwater, if you like, and the separation between Brightwater and the next settlement in, 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 with that rural land as well. And the next question, um, so how many homes would able to be built in these locations? Uh, have you allowed for enough residential growth capacity? Um, we we haven't done that analysis yet because we haven't landed on exactly what was what what zoning or what area should be developed at the moment. We're really focusing on what uh, areas um, could be developed, um, what areas should be should remain rural, and in what form, what vision do people have in relation to to those areas. So we. We're not at that point of, of deciding on a particular option or really considering an option. These are, these are concepts, early insight concepts, ideas, trying to provide a visual visual um, aid. Just remembering that the future in terms of the brief is 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 around that um, you know they need to find um, 2,000 new homes, enable 2,000 new homes is, is effectively the, the direction. Um, this is being retested through the future development strategy as well. And so once we once we get through that more refined way of looking at, at the zoning areas and development areas, we'll be able to answer that question more clearly in terms of what a low growth, medium growth, and high growth scenario could look like, depending on how much land is made available for residential growth. And final question here is, can we receive a copy of this PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I think the answer is 100%, isn't it? We'll, we'll make that available, yeah. And I think uh, what's the best way to do that? Um, you could probably put it on the website, I guess. Either that or email us, and we uh, um, and we can uh, just to the um, Richmond South email address that's that's around, and we can just email it out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we can make a, a PDF copy available online, and um, also I think that this webinar itself will be a recording of it will be made available online as well, and very soon. Well, that's it for the questions. Wonderful. Oh, excellent. Well, yeah, all that remains is for me to uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it's um, been a really good session, some excellent, excellent questions coming in. So I'd just like to thank you uh, all for tuning in. And uh, one more reminder to get involved next week and indeed uh, throughout the um, the rest of this uh, Reimagining Richmond South project. Uh, so I'll just uh, close with a, a karakia. Kia tau to rangimarie, ki runga igna iwi o te ao which means let peace reign on all the people of the world. Which seems appropriate. And on that uh, note, I'll say good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, everybody. Kakite. Yeah.